thinking of planning for the next year's work, uh, there are a few considerations for manhole inspections. I'd like to just present the traditional methods as well as the new technologies that are coming. As you start planning for the next year's work, there are a few considerations to think about for manhole inspections. I'll go over some traditional methods and items to cover those objectives and also new technologies you might want to consider. Why do we need to do manhole inspections? Most importantly, it's the structural integrity. For many communities, the O&M procedures do not consider putting into um, their cycle for manhole inspections and the rehabs. The secondary consideration, which is quite important and significant, is the impacts of INI. A lot of the items for INI are easily fixable, especially when it's dealing with frame and seal and pick hole repairs. In traditional inspections, a few items to note is that it's very quick in terms of just doing surface inspections, but on deeper manholes, you will require to do full depth inspections. And the challenges for full depth is you do need confined space entry. The other challenge that comes with the traditional inspection is the limited post inspections. The data is entered by the field crew and it's very difficult to internally look at every detail and interpretation when it's being QC'd in the office. On the contrary to that, the new technologies um, in manhole scanning offer a lot more robust information that can be analyzed in the office as well. The information can also be obtained and scanned into GIS, which is really good for post rehab evaluation, as well as post inspection evaluation to compare it to the rehab information. But it does require a lot more office time and review. And it does require um, a lot of data storage. But the data storage as time goes by becomes even much more, um, the cost of that becomes less expensive. Other considerations to highlight uh, between the traditional and new technologies is that traditional technology, again, is very subjective and interpretation by the field crew. It's two dimensional as opposed to a new technology will capture a 3D view of the structure. Um, on average, traditional technology inspections, you can accomplish 20 to 25 service inspections and 15 inspections um, by dive per day. Whereas using the scanners, you can accomplish up to 40 manhole inspections and scans during a day. There are quite a lot of technologies that have come around in the last 10 years. Um, CleverScan, iBag, Spider, Helix. RJN predominantly uses uh, iBag and CleverScans. So I'd like to go deeper into the clever scan, what it entails and the benefits of it. In the last year in 2018, RGN purchased four units of clever scan and within 2018, within a year, we've been able to accomplish uh, 7,000 scans and that'll be the number for the end of the year. Uh, beauty of CleverScan is that it, it is quite portable, only 38 pounds, very easy to maneuver, especially for backyards. Um, I back and other systems may require a bit of a challenge to take it into more remote places. Uh, the limitation on the CleverScan is the distance for the, the depth of the manhole. Uh, the distance for the cord is about 33 feet and I would say safely to scan a manhole, you know, anything above um, 30 feet might be a bit difficult. But in general, most of the manhole structures are within that 
um, depth. In the field, let's review some of the field operations. Um, when the field crew arrives on the job site, they have the Clever Scan unit, which is connected to a laptop. They will enter the manhole data onto their laptop, do a quick scan, which is, takes about 30 seconds, um, review the scan itself, and then move on to the next structure. If all goes well, um, they can do up to 40 scans per day. This is a quick overview of um, RJN's manhole scan uh, program. So once the scan is accomplished, most of the work happens in the office. And data is downloaded from the portable external drives, and a WinCan software reviews the information that's received. All of these scans are reviewed for NASCO level one or two, and you can do as much or as little uh, of callouts within your scans. You can take the camera and internally scan and pan, zoom in and out of the manhole. You can look vertical as well as a 360 view as if you were actually in the manhole structure. And then you can use the software to highlight and identify the mat, uh, the pipes that are coming in, as well as the defects that are found. You're also able to use the measure and dimension tools to identify the pipe sizing, um, you know, how your steps are, how much defects that are showing, how extensive those defects are. And as you can see on the left side, there is a view of the camera. So as you move that camera location up and down, your view on the right side also pans, showing what that structure looks like. Again, the labeling, you would just simply touch the location and type in the defect information and call it out. The other beauty of the scan is it also generates a 3D view of the cloud of the structure there. WinCan offers a robust option of viewing and notating attributes and defects, uh, notating the material that is within your structure. WinCan also offers a variety of types of templates for the reports. Reports, once you have it set up for the project and you identify all the defects you have, then it's fairly quick printout that can be used for a variety of reports, everything from top site information to within your structures to a list of all the data that's been um, reviewed as well as uh, recommendations that have been put in. 
In summary, RGN's experience in re reviewing the 7,000 manholes. We really enjoyed uh, having a system that's very portable, can be easily taken into backyards, very mobile, and provides a 3D image so that uh, post inspection, anyone reviewing that data anywhere from someone in the field, um, you know, clients who have um, public works staff who want to look at it, or somebody that is uh, doing some engineering recommendations and they would like to go back and view the manhole in 3D without actually going out to the field. Uh, it makes it very easy. And safety-wise, it does not require confined space entry. Um, the limitations are before any inspections are done, they have to make sure that um, the battery is fully charged. It only allows you for a one day's inspection, eight hours. Um, the other assurances that you want is to make sure that you have sufficient uh, portable data devices so that as you're collecting the information that you can have it saved on site. You are able to upload the data into the cloud and save it, but that there are challenges and risks depending on how remote you are and how good your internet is. So my recommendation would be that to have some sort of a portable external device, and then you can always bring it into the office at the end of the day and save it in onto your hard drive. Um, a few of the things that the scanner does not do is it does not do topside photos. So you want photos of the area, it will not do that. So that's something that you have to have a little time for your spill and field inspections to do. Um, it does not take GPS points. So that's something that if you want to do some asset management um, data collection, that, that will need to be collected separately. And more easily, the field staff can be trained fairly fast, but it is something that they need to understand when they are collecting the data, what actually needs to be checked in the field so that you don't have to go back out in the field. Make sure the videos are clean, pictures are clear, and it is properly saved. Um, the final issue is that just the clients getting to know this technology and the benefits of it in long term, they are able to not just have that data in their asset management system, but it's a benefit to them that three years down the line, they may not um, have those manholes as a priority, but three years down the line, they want to go ahead and do some design work. It's easy for them to go back to their asset management system, look at inside the structures as if they were inspecting it themselves. So there's a lot of benefits to this. Um, and I do recommend that be a consideration for uh, future inspections. Um, again, just to emphasize, Anytime inspections are done, it's very important to look at it from the point of rehab. You know, when when are you planning on rehab? When are your streets getting rehab? Do you want to time the inspections to future projects that are coming down the line as well? <laughs>